Hello, this is the day I have my first summer TBR. On my side, I want to go back to TBRs. I always, I film so many TBRs. <laughs> this one, I want to finish. I want to read this TBR. I decided with my TBR part what I want to do now, um, since I'm no longer teaching, um, I'm going to start doing the weekly wrap ups again. Will they be posted in time? No. But I figure my top layer will be TBR, and then once I finish that row, then I can get into TBR. My second row will be uh, weekly wrap ups. And then the final row will be for book hauls. I figured I'd do book hauls again. Um, again, because I'm not teaching anymore, which made it kind of difficult to do that. Um, I, I will be teaching again, but it won't be high schoolers anymore. So they're not, I mean, I, I might I might give a high schooler Brady Snell's book, but I'm not going to give one to a fifth grader. Um, so this is my first summer TBR. Uh, let's get started. First up, the first book I have on this TBR is Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z. Bright. I've been wanting to read this book for so long. Uh, this is always talked up whenever people are talking about extreme horror and I've been getting into extreme horror. I've been reading a lot of Richard Lehman who is a little weird uh, and I heard that this book is also a little weird. Uh, but that's kind of what you do when you get into extreme horror. I'm very excited to read it. Super fun. Uh, the next book on my TBR is uh, Ziggy Stardust and Me by James Brandon which is about this kid in the 70s, gay kid in the 70s who's having a lot of issues because it's the 70s and he's gay. Uh, and I actually just recently got this book. I received this book like two days ago, it was uh, May 21st when I'm filming this, and I thought it, it, it looked like a really interesting time. Um, I read like the, I skimmed through it a little bit, it seemed fun. Uh, the next book is just on here because it's real short, <laughs> and that is uh, Life Without Alice by Elizabeth Benning, which is about, I believe, a twin, um, uh, yeah, Alice is put in the hospital with a brain tumor, so this is some classic 80s YA, uh, 90s, it's 1993, um, that should not take very long at all to read. Uh, then I've got Real American by Julie Lifcott Hames, which is an arc, uh, but it came out in 2017. This is a book I've won from Goodreads years and years and years ago, and I'm just now getting around to it. I don't know why they continue to send me books, uh, but this is a memoir. I believe it is about a woman, a woman, yep, Julie, a woman. Uh, yeah, low self esteem that American racism inflicts on people of color, uh, African American father and a white British mother. All right, seems like it should be a pretty, pretty easy, not like emotionally, but in terms of reading pretty quick. Uh, then I have been recollecting all of the Gone books. Um, and if I recollect books, that means I also get to read them because when I buy a book, it goes in the book wall, whether I've read it or not. Um, and so I have the first four books in the Gone series on this TBR. First up, I do have, obviously, Gone. Uh, these books are not in order. Um, I mean, like the books are in order, but like, it's not just gonna be Gone, Hunger, Lies, Plague. It's gonna be Gone and some other books. But the Gone series was one of my favorite books as a kid, as a teenager. I loved the series, it was like one of my favorites. And so I donated my entire series, which was in the crappy old covers, to the school that I used to work at. And I've said that now I get to rebuy them in the crappy old covers, but this time all in hardback. So I've got like the first four. Um, so I'll have two more to get. I think I have one of number five coming. But this one, this Gone is about this town called Perdido Beach in California where one day a dome drops over it and then everybody over the age of 15 just disappears. And I love the series so much. I think it's super fun. Um, every time I read the last book, it makes me ball my fucking head. Uh, then we've got the first volume of Sasuke Miyano by Sho Harusono. Uh, I watched the anime and it was super cute. So I'm imagining that this is also going to be super cute. Uh, yeah, this is about Sasuke and Miyano, who are, uh, they go to the same school. Sasuke is a little bit older and he starts borrowing the yellow manga from Miyano and it is the most slow burn. My God, it's terrible. Uh, then speaking of the Gone books, we have Hunger, which is the second book. Then I've got Bird Box by Josh Mallerman, which I've been meaning to read for so long. Um, I've heard it's very, very good. Uh, I heard the movie was terrible, but it is on my Netflix list anyway. Uh, so I will be reading this. It should be quick. It's not very long. Then we got to take a little bit of a break before we grab this one here. It's a, oh. Okay, so last year I read a different book by this author. Um, and if we're talking about extreme horror, and we're talking about like the roots of extreme horror, we cannot talk about this without talking about the man who literally has sadism named after him. Uh, so I read Justine last year, and I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, so I, if you do not know, I uh, I was I graduated college with an English major with minors in 
uh, French history and creative writing. Um, and I am very, I'm, I'm a little Francophile uh, at times, especially considering the French Revolution. And I'm very, very familiar with the rhetoric and the philosophy surrounding the French Revolution. And the Marquis de Sade was writing like, he was like imprisoned during the French Revolution. So it's like, all like Justine is torture porn intermixed with French philosophy. And I really enjoyed it. And I don't know what it is. I think it might be that I do speak French and I do, um, you know, know a lot about French history. So French classics always go over a lot better for me than classics from other countries. Uh, so that could have also something to do with it. But I will be reading 120 Days of Sodom by the Marquis de Sade. This does have a movie which I do own. I have not watched it. It's part of the Criterion Collection. I have a very, very pretty case uh, for Solo 120 Days of Sodom. I am like, I don't want to say excited for this, but like I kind of am a little bit just because I, I do, I did enjoy Justine. I, I loved how she just died at the end. Um, spoilers, I guess. Nobody's, no, no, none of you are going to read Justine. None of you should read Justine. Uh, but yeah. Um, 120 Days of Sodom by the Marquis de Sade would relate the story of four wealthy men who enslaved 24 mostly teenage victims and sexually tortured them while listening to stories told by old prostitutes. The book was written while Sade was imprisoned in the Bastille and when the manuscript was lost during the storming of the Bastille, like I was saying, French Revolution, um, the, it would not have, the storming of the Bastille would not have happened without the Marquis de Sade uh, or Kemi de Milan, the love of my life. Anyway, Sade wrote that he wept tears of blood over the manuscript lost. Many consider this to be Sade's crowning achievement except for We've got a typo on the back there. See, so yeah, I'll be reading this. Uh, then we've got another gone book. My favorite book in the series, actually. Lies. Uh, I love Lies. I like it mostly because we get to see my favorite character in the gone series is Howard. I think he's super fun. Um, and this one gets my how do you know. All right. And we got... Um, a Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. I've never read anything by this woman. I heard that she's very good. This is uh, Dark Academia, I believe, and I do enjoy me some Dark Academia. Um, so I figured this would be a fun time. Uh, then, got, I'm just, uh, Bad Girls with Perfect Faces by Lynn Weingarten. I don't know really anything about this book. I believe, I know it's a, a young adult thriller, I believe. Um, interesting. Okay, we got catfishing in this one, whatever. Um, and then I've got Less Than Zero by Brett Easton Ellis. I did hold up the shards earlier, that's what I'm reading right now. I'm like 200 pages in, it's so good. Uh, I read one other book by Brett Easton Ellis. I read Glamorama last year, it was my favorite book of the year. Um, so I'm very excited. Whenever I go into Barnes & Noble, I do look and see what they have for Brett Easton Ellis. I own I'm reading the shards. I have this one. I also have American Psycho somewhere in the book wall. I have not read American Psycho, but Glamorama was so good. And the shards has been so good so far. So I am excited to read this one. This is going to be the shortest Brady Stanella's book I've ever read. Because Glamorama is like 400 pages. The shards is like 500 pages. But I'm excited. Um, and then finally, the final book is book four in the Gone series, Plague. So that is my uh, TBR for the upcoming next few I don't know weeks months I don't I don't really know um school's over so like who knows but can we oh we got the shards too that's okay these are the books I'm planning on reading the next couple weeks we'll see how it goes um I hope to finish them I know this looks like a lot the God series is really easy to read um I've read them several times before so yeah this is these are my books that I'm going to be reading the next couple weeks Hopefully I can get back into filming more. Um, my phone has so much storage on it. So that is that. That's all I have for today. I'll talk to you later. Peace. Bye.